Aloha, welcome back for another lesson on chapter 7, Inventories and Cost of Sales. Um, now, if you recall, in the first lesson I, I mentioned that this, this chapter is pretty difficult for most students. Um, in addition to two inventory systems or inventory methods that uh, can be used, either the periodic inventory method or the perpetual inventory method, one, uh, another thing that makes uh, inventories uh, challenging uh, for beginning students is that we have three, actually four different cost flow assumptions. But we cover, for the most part, we cover uh, three of those uh, cost flow assumptions uh, routinely in this course. <clears throat> now, those cost flow assumptions are referred to as FIFO. LIFO and weighted average. The fourth cost flow assumption is the specific identification uh, assumption. So again we have two inventory methods periodic and perpetual and then for each of those two inventory methods we could have up to four different cost flow assumptions FIFO or first in first out LIFO or last in first out, weighted average or specific identification. Now it's it's important to note that when we talk about cost flow assumptions that's exactly what it is. It's an assumption about the way inventory cost is moving in the business. And uh, I think the best way to illustrate that is to uh, work through one of these exercises. So what I'm going to try and do is uh, exercise 7-5 on page 339. Now in exercise 7-5, they're asking us to calculate the ending inventory and cost of goods sold under the periodic inventory method using FIFO and then LIFO and finally weighted average. And then either in this lesson or in another lesson, uh, depending on how much time this takes, we will jump to uh, exercise 7-20 on page 345. And that's basically asking us to do uh, the same thing calculate ending inventory and cost of goods sold uh, using in this case only FIFO and LIFO but under the perpetual inventory system. So <clears throat> this can take a lot of time so why don't we uh, get started. I have uh, a basic uh, starting point up here some headings across the top of the page. Date, the description, units, UC stands for unit costs and TC stands for total cost. And so <clears throat> if we go back to E-7-5, -E uh, we'll do this uh, first for FIFO and then for LIFO. And then if we have time we'll do weighted average. It says Oahu Kiki tracks the number of units purchased and sold throughout each accounting period but applies its inventory costing method at the end of each month as if it uses a periodic inventory system. I should note <clears throat> in the first lesson where I showed the formula to calculate cost of goods sold I mentioned that this is an illustration of the periodic inventory system or periodic inventory method. The periodic inventory method calculates cost of goods sold at the end of the period. And generally that period is the annual period. So we would normally do a physical inventory to calculate our ending inventory at the end of the fiscal year just something to uh, keep in mind. So 
so getting back to exercise 7-5, uh, it says, um, assume Oahu Kiki's records show the following for the month of January, and, and uh, we show beginning inventory and purchases on January 15th and January 24th. And then finally it says sales for the month was 240 units. So let's see how this works. The first thing we do is put in our beginning inventory. And this, this is the information presented in the problem itself. Our beginning inventory is made up of 120 units. The unit cost was $8.00. And so our total cost, that's taking 120 times 8, our total cost is 960. And again, this is information presented in the problem. Then on January 15, we had a purchase of 380 units at a unit cost of nine dollars and a total cost of thirty four twenty and finally on January twenty fourth we had an additional purchase of two hundred units at a unit cost of $11 and a total cost of $2,200. Now this would be our starting point. Again, we need to calculate ending inventory and cost of goods sold. We're assuming the periodic inventory method, so our calculations are done at the end of the period. It tells us that uh, this company does their calculations at the end of each month as if they're using a periodic inventory method. And so, and it also uh, already told us in the problem that they sold uh, 240 units uh, during the month of January. So the first thing we want to do is total our unit column and our total cost column. And so I'm going to use my little handy dandy calculator. And we have 700 units. And on the cost column, Sixty-five eighty. Note what's happening to unit cost from beginning of month to end of month. Our unit cost went from eight to nine in the middle of the month, and from nine to eleven uh, near the end of the month. Um, I think we all uh, understand that economic phenomenon that uh, uh, we're talking about when prices rise over time and that's simply inflation and so typically uh, that's what we'll find uh, with many commodities uh, in the marketplace as time goes on prices rise I think a great example uh, recently uh, is uh, with the price of gas uh, which seems to be changing almost daily as we move forward uh, in time. And uh, right now it's uh, beginning of April and it's predict and gas is probably about 4.65 a gallon on average. And it's predicted that by the summertime it'll be five dollars a gallon. Anyway, that's inflation. And so that's incorporated into our example here. Um, now, the next thing we need to do is account for our sales. And so we need to show that sales 
was 240 units, and that was for the whole month. And so the key at this point is to calculate the unit cost and then the total cost of those sales. And it will depend on what cost flow assumption we are using. We need to show one more thing in here. And that is the balance of our ending inventory in units. And so we had 700 units available for sale. And we sold 240 units. And so we have 460 units in our ending inventory. So, which units were sold during the month of January? Again, it will depend on what cost flow assumption we use. And so the first one we want to use is FIFO. The FIFO cost flow assumption basically says first in, first out, and what this really means is first purchased, first sold, first purchased, first sold. And again, it's an assumption. Uh, we, can, we can sell inventory out of our inventory uh, stock any way we want to. But for accounting purposes, if we're using the first in, first out cost flow assumption, then this is what we're saying. The first, the earliest inventory that we have on hand, including our beginning inventory, is the first inventory that we have sold. And so of the 240 units sold in January, if we are using FIFO, then we have, we assume that we have sold 120 units that cost $8 each, which was our beginning inventory, plus another 120 units out of our first purchase for the month of January 15th that had cost $9 per unit. So if we were to multiply these numbers out, we would get 120 uh, times 8 is 960. I'm going to uh, squeeze that in here, 960 and 120 uh, times 9, and that's 1080. And if we add those two together, it's 24. So the cost of January sales using first in, first out is $2,040. Our calculations are in this box 120 units at $8, and moving down the list of inventory, another 120 units at nine dollars and these two together give us the 240 units sold. How's about our ending inventory? Well the quickest way to calculate ending inventory is to subtract the cost of what we sold 
from the total cost of what was available for sale. And so if we did that, the cost that would give us the cost of our ending inventory of $4,540. Four hundred and sixty units at four thousand five hundred and forty dollars. Now we should also be able to calculate that amount just as we calculated the cost of goods sold. We should be able to calculate the ending inventory. And so if we had sold under FIFO, we assumed that we had sold 120 and another 120 out of this 380. So that would leave us with 160 at nine dollars in our ending inventory. 160 at nine dollars plus the 200 at 11. So if we multiplied those amounts out, 160 at 9 is 1440, and 200 at 11, 2200. And if we added these together, I made an error. I made an error here. When I subtracted 120 from 380, I showed uh, 160. This is actually 260. And the reason I made an error because this total is not coming out to the total over on the right hand side, and it should. So let's recalculate. This is 260 units at $9 left from this purchase. 260 units at $9. Plus the 200 units at $11. So we need to recalculate this first amount, that's 260 at 9, 2,340. And I think this one is correct, $2,200. So when we add those two amounts together, we come up with 4,540 which is our ending inventory. I apologize for the error, but uh, at the same time, it's probably good that I made it because it's, it shows that uh, we all make errors all the time, and so we have to be very careful when we do our calculations, even relatively simple calculations like what I did. And no, I made this error without using uh, my calculator. I should have used my calculator. Okay, so again, first in, first out, periodic inventory. Uh, we have calculated our uh, cost of sales at 2040 and our ending inventory at 4540 Note that the total of the cost of sales and the total plus the ending inventory is always equal to cost of goods available for sale. And I think I'm going to uh, stop here and we'll come back to it. Thank you.